Hi, welcome to Papa's Workshop. Today I'm going to go into how to calibrate the X card. We're going to open up the computer system, go into the advanced setting, and look at the programming and calibrate the X card. This is something that I've been wanting to do for quite a while and just haven't done it. One of my subscribers specifically asked for help, so I decided to go ahead and get this video done for him and for everybody else out there. So let's get started. The first thing that I want to do is go right up to the top left on this menu bar and I want to select machine and I want to come down and select advanced. With that menu popping up I want to click on machine inspector and now what I have is the actual settings in the computer. Now I want to zoom in real close and show you. We're only going to be looking at three lines today. We're looking at line with the uh, dollar sign 100. That is the X axis. The next one is the dollar sign with the 101. That is the Y axis. And the next line is the dollar sign with the 102 and that's going to be the z-axis. What I'm going to concentrate on in this video is the x-axis. So we're going to be looking primarily at line 100. Because if you can calibrate the x-axis, then you're going to be able to follow the exact same steps to calibrate the y-axis and the z-axis. Now to do this calibration, we need to set up the machine a little bit also. And the first thing that I've done is I've removed the laser and I also removed the laser mount. Be able to have you see what's going on a little bit easier. The other thing that I've done is I put in a 60 degree bit. I need a bit with a very sharp point down at the bottom. Because the next thing that we're going to need is some type of ruler and it needs to be in millimeters and what we're going to do is calibrate the machine based on the millimeters and the reason that I use millimeters is it because one millimeter is actually the smallest unit that I have it's a lot smaller than a sixteenth of an inch and this is just far easier to be able to calibrate it and get the accuracy that we need and for many of you throughout the world you use millimeters every day anyway. For those in the United States that are used to inches and feet, well, find the tape measure, find a ruler, find something that has millimeters because that is going to be real important. To do this calibration today, we're using easel. And to be able to do that, you can go down to this jog machine command screen and you have the choice of inches or millimeters. So what I'm going to do is go and change the option and select this button right there and change this to millimeters. Now the situation in this is that you only can move it 10 millimeters at a time. Now there's other different programs out there which gives you the freedom to be able to move as much as you want and you can actually key in a value. So we're going to be jogging the machine at 10 millimeters at a time to do this calibration. This is now set directly over 400 millimeters. And what I want to do is go 200 millimeters to the right. So from 400 to 600 millimeters. So let's see how far we are off now with that calibration. So I'm going to move my camera over to that point. So here is 600 millimeters. Let's see what happens when I move the machine to that point.
Okay, there you have it. We moved the machine at increments of 10 millimeters at a time. We should have stopped here at the 600 millimeters. We stopped at 610, looks like about 0.5. So we're gonna call that 610.5. So now how do we go about making this correction? <clears throat> Just for the record, I think it's time for me to put a real whiteboard up on my wall to be able to show this type of demonstrations. But here you go. X1 is going to be the ideal distance traveled. And in this case, we wanted it to go 200 millimeters. The actual X2 is going to be the actual distance traveled. In this case, it was 210 0.25. Now just for the sake of argument, I want to go ahead and subtract that and I know that it's 10.25 millimeters. Now what do we do with that? We actually take the ideal distance traveled right here and divide it by 210.25. Then we're going to times this number by what's in our computer. Now I went ahead and put 42.0 in the machine to get mine out of calibration. And what I did is went into my settings and I changed the dollar sign 100 which is my x-axis to 42 so it was out of calibration. So here's the information that we just gathered from the machine itself. My X1 is the ideal distance traveled. We wanted it to go to 200 millimeters. It actually went 210. So my X2 is the actual distance traveled. So when I subtract these two numbers, I get a minus 10.25. Not too worried about the minus sign but it was a difference of 10.25. Now, what I do with this number, I take my 200, which is my ideal distance traveled, and divide that by 210.25, which is the actual distance traveled. So this is my X1 divided by my X2, that equals 200 divided by the 210.25. Then I multiply that by my dollar sign 100 setting, which was 42. Now let me get a calculator, and we'll do that for you. So here's how the calculation works. I take my 200 divided by the 210.25. That equals 0.9512 times my 42, which is my x-axis setting right now, and that equals 39.95. So I need to go back into the computer setting now and put in this new setting. So what I'm going to do is come over here and select machine, select the advanced setting, then I'm going to come over and select machine inspector, And then I want to show you right now that current setting, the dollar sign equals 42. So what I have to do is come up here to the top and I'm going to type in my new setting, which is dollar sign 100 equals 39.95. And I'll hit enter. Now then, that new setting is right there. It shows right underneath. So that is done. All I needed to be able to do now is close this, and it's set. Now if you want to verify that, let's go back in and verify it. We're just going to open it up again just to verify it. We're going to scroll down. And if we scroll down, you're going to see that the new setting 
Well, the 100 dollar sign equals 100 is 39.95. Now the next thing I want to do is go ahead and verify that our new setting is correct. So I now have the x-axis set exactly at the 400 millimeters again. And we're going to move it once more the 200 millimeters to the right. And let's see where it ends up. So if we come in and look at that now, up close, you can see that it moved exactly 200 millimeters. So our setting is perfectly set now. Calibration is confirmed and done. That's how easy it is to be able to do the stepper calibration in the X-Carve using the easel. One of the things that I'd like to point out, if you still have questions, please reach out to me in the comments. Ask the questions, and I definitely will get back in touch with you. If you have something specific that you want to reach out to me, and you don't want it in the general comments, please use the link in the description with my email address and contact me that way. I will answer, and I will do the best I can to answer any questions that you have. Hi everyone, thank you for watching my video today. If you like the video, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button down below and the little bell next to it so you'll be notified on the different videos that I upload. Also, check out the videos over here to be able to stay up to date on the happenings in my shop. So again, thank you for watching my videos.